Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com, and today I've got your full Sunto 5 Peak in-depth review and user interface tour. Now this video is divided basically into five simple chunks. The very first bit is what's new on the Sunto 5, followed by what the core features are on the Sunto 5, followed then by how it differs from the Sunto 9 and the Sunto 7. From there, I'll go into the pros and cons, like the core things that I've really loved and the core things that I've really hated about using this watch over the last month. And then finally from there, I'll go into a bit of a user interface tour, show you how the watch works hands-on. It's honestly as simple as that. Oh, and this video is definitely not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. I'm gonna tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly about using this watch, as I said, over the past month or so. Now, first up on the newness. Uh, the most obvious thing is it's slimmer, a lot slimmer. If you look at the old Sunto 5, uh, you'll notice that, you know, from like a technical standpoint, the actual case itself isn't that much different. It's only about a millimeter and a half uh, thinner. However, the biggest difference is the band on the old Sunto 5 was non-bendable. This part up here is just a big chunk there, almost twice the thickness of the actual unit itself versus this here, it uses 22 millimeter uh, standard issue watch band, so you can swap it out for whatever you want. So that is the second change, the fact that there's now 22 millimeter bands that are removable versus the giant like bulky bands of the past. The next bit is they've changed the GPS in it. Uh, and so that's a relatively minor thing, but it went ahead and actually also allowed them to get much longer battery life. With the new tour mode, that gets up to 100 hours of GPS battery life. The general GPS stats though are 20 hours in the base mode, 40 hours in kind of a mediocre mode, and then 100 hours in a reduced recording mode. Keeping in mind that 100 hour mode though is reducing the GPS track points quite considerably. So you're not gonna get the same level of accuracy in that as you would in the 20 hour mode. And finally, the last new feature is they've added new wireless firmware updates. This was added to the Sunto 9 Peak uh, last summer, and now it's here on the Sunto 5 Peak. In fact, in general, there isn't actually a ton new in the Sunto 5 Peak except for the external hardware design and the new GPS chipset inside. Uh, instead, most of the features have already been introduced to the Sunto 5 over the past nine months or so since last summer, and that includes a bunch of the Sunto 9 Peak features that were added to this as well. Uh, so if I look at some of those, that includes like the Android predefined reply, it includes music control, it includes snap to route, which is the ability to load a route into the watch and then have the unit use that for the GPS track, as well as also how it determines your pace and distance. Uh, so that's ideal in the case of, for example, a city-based marathon, where you know you're going to run that exact course, uh, and you want it to go and snap to that course uh, from a pacing and distance standpoint. Plus, there's some additional Sunto apps I've added over the last uh, nine or so months. Now, one final note is that it does use the same old-school clip-on charger as the past, so this just clips on like that, uh, as simple as that. So, uh, you know, I don't mind this charger, it's fine, but I do also like the newer uh, Sunto 9 Peak magnetic charger that just always goes to the right spot. Uh, this one, you can sometimes clip it in the wrong spot and you don't realize it's not quite perfectly aligned, but it's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. Okay, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting and useful, consider whacking that like button bottom there right now. It really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Okay, so just stepping back for a second and briefly talking about some of the watch basics in case you're new to this sort of the Sunto lineup. Uh, this is a full multi-sport watch, meaning that you can do you know, swimming and biking and running, but multi-sport means that you can do all those things together as one particular activity. So you can go out and do a triathlon if you want to. Uh, this is priced at 299 euros or 329 US dollars, which is sort of like in the mid-tier budget level. Level, uh, for GPS watches. Uh, it also has an optical heart rate sensor on the back that you see right there. This goes ahead and measures your heart rate during workouts as well as 24 by seven during the rest of the day. It doesn't update quite as frequently as most other companies do. Uh, this is a fairly old sensor in it, but as you'll see in the accuracy section in just a moment, that's not too big a deal. It generally does a pretty decent job. Next, it does support Bluetooth smart pairing, which I'll show you in just a moment. So you can go ahead and pair up a Bluetooth smart power meter, a Bluetooth smart cadence sensor, or even a Bluetooth smart heart rate strap in the event that uh, you don't like the accuracy that you're getting out of the optical heart rate sensor, that is certainly an option. It also has automated suggested workouts. Uh, so it looks at your current workouts and it gives you a suggested workout for that particular day. Uh, not every single day, but sort of a given schedule, a training plan that they have for you. And that training plan will change based on your volume. So if you do more volume, more workouts, uh, harder workouts, it'll give you more volume to do. And inversely, if you do less, it'll try to get back on the bandwagon and again to go ahead and start working out. So now if we compare the main core differences between something like this and the Sunto 9 series, Series. I've got handy dandy notes right there. Number one is less battery life. Uh, so obviously it's a smaller watch, it's gonna have less battery life in it. Uh, number two is there's no barometric altimeter in it. Now I actually have not found that to be a huge deal. If I look at the GPS-based altimeter that it does have in it, uh, I'm getting pretty solid data, really solid data that compares very, very well uh, with other units that do have altimeters in it. Next, this has a slightly smaller screen than the Sunto 9 Peak uh, at 1.1 inches versus 1.2 inches. Uh, you probably won't notice that, but you will notice the fact that there's no touchscreen on this 
versus a Suunto 9 Peak. I'm not really a touchscreen person though, so honestly, that's not a huge deal to me. Uh, I find like for sport usage, these buttons here, uh, three on this side and two on this side, uh, work quite well for getting around. Those buttons then lead into the next item, which is the fact that they are uh, plastic as opposed to the metal buttons that you see on the Suunto 9 Peak. And you'll see other kind of material and case differences on the Suunto 9 Peak that you wouldn't see on this cheaper watch. And again, this watch is roughly like a little more than half the price of that watch, so that makes sense to have material differences there. Meanwhile, if you compare it to something like the Suunto 7 series, that's a totally different beast. Uh, that's a Wear OS based watch, so it's going to have a really beautiful display and have all the apps and the ecosystem of the Wear OS platform. Uh, so you can download music on it, you can download maps on it, the maps uh, that Suunto has there have heat maps in it, like all this cool stuff but all that is at the expense of battery life. Uh, so this has really good battery life, as I mentioned, you know, 20 to 100 hours of GPS time. Uh, the Suunto 7, like in a default config, is gonna get like four to six hours in a good stretch. And you can, you can stretch that a bit more if you turn off a bunch of features, but that's realistically what you're talking about. And like day-to-day -day usage, you're talking there, you know, a day, a day and a half at best uh, on that watch, uh, just in a smartwatch mode, uh, versus this here, you're talking like upwards of a couple weeks in smartwatch mode. So uh, those are core differences, really different watches for different audiences, but if you're not gonna use it for more than four to six hours and you don't mind charging every single day, like an Apple watch or Samsung watch or something like that, then in that case, that may be something to consider. Especially because these days, the price points are pretty similar between this and the Suunto 7 on sale most of the time. Okay, so with the basics out of the way, let's talk about what worked well for me and then what didn't work so well for me. And then from there, we'll dive into the user interface bits. Uh, so the first thing that worked well is the GPS. I had generally pretty good luck with GPS on this. This despite the fact that this is not the most advanced GPS chipset, but I put it up against things like the brand new Garmin Phoenix 7, the Coros Vertex 2, the new Epix, uh, and in all these cases, Cases, it generally held its own. Yes, there were certain scenarios where I was next to cliffs and things like that where it wasn't quite as perfect line as those fancy new dual frequency multi-band GPS chipsets, but those watches cost like three times as much, up a thousand plus dollars, uh, and this generally held its own for the most part. The other area this struggled a little bit with though was bridges and underpasses and tunnels, things like that. Coming in and out of those, it tended to wobble a little more than I'd expect uh, from really any GPS device in this territory, so that's something that maybe they can improve down the road. Next, routing and navigation was also pretty good. I mostly loaded routes in Komoot, which automatically synced to the Suunto app. I just checked the little box in the Suunto app, and then it pushes it to the watch. And then once out and about, it gives me my turn by turn navigation. Now keep in mind, there's no maps on this. So you're not gonna see like the terrain around you. You're just gonna see a typical breadcrumb trail, uh, but that worked largely just fine for me. And you can also see the elevation profile as well on the route as you're going along. Uh, so again, all that worked out well for me. And that tends to be one of Suunto's strong suits. Next, workout heart rate accuracy was also pretty good for the most part. Uh, not perfect, but it generally was very, very close. I saw some little bobbles where like it would be plus or minus three to maybe seven beats per minute, uh, just randomly for a few seconds, then go snap back to the track again. Uh, that's something that I wouldn't expect to see for most watches, but it wasn't like vastly off. So I didn't see like major errors, but I also saw these little blips that you can see right there where you're like, yeah, that's, that should be better locked on, especially in some of these indoor workouts. But overall, I'd say it was relatively good across a wide variety of workouts, indoors, outdoors, uh, cycling, running, hiking, all that kind of stuff. Similarly, the battery life was also very good for me, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, on, you know, long rides, like seven hour rides and long hikes, you know, five, six hour hikes, uh, no issues with battery life and using it day after day without even charging it at all. Okay, so while the battery life was good, let's talk about what was not so good. In this case, the display. The display on the Suunto 5 Peak is not good at all. Um, and you can see it's very, very dim, even in like these studio lights. There's literally lights everywhere around me and this display looks dark here. And I promise you it looks even more dark when it's on your wrist and off angle, uh, especially if it's dim in the room or anything like that. It's just not strong at all. Uh, it does work well in bright conditions. So outside in the sun, no problems at all. Uh, but this is without doubt, industry trailing uh, display, especially if you don't have good eyesight, you're probably gonna wanna skip this one. Okay, the next area to talk about is sensor pairing. This is something mostly for cyclists and triathletes, uh, but the Suunto series watches, all of them in fact, only allow you to pair one type of one sensor. So uh, you can only pair, for example, one power meter, but you can't pair two different bikes worth of power meters or a trainer in there, things like that. So yes, you can pair a heart rate strap and you can pair a power meter concurrently, but only one of those types. And again, for like hikers, this will make no sense and probably not be that big of a deal or not a deal at all. Uh, but for triathletes, this is a real problem if you have multiple devices. It also doesn't tell you what those devices are. So I have no idea whether or not I paired my power meter or paired my trainer or I paired my my wife's bike. I just 
have no idea whatsoever until you like start testing things. It's just really cumbersome and it's like, you know, half a decade behind. Similarly, on the sporting front, uh, there's no structured workout. So while there are these like workouts in the fitness thing that tells you to go hard or things like that every single day, they're not structured. It just simply says, go hard for this whole workout or go easy for this workout, but you can't download a structured workout from Training Peaks or any other platform to it. Again, this is stuff that's been in other competitors for a decade plus. Like it's time for Sunto as the, you know, an endurance sports focused company to have endurance sports focused structured workouts or any structured workouts that are downloadable from platforms like Training Peaks, Today's Plan, et cetera. That's just, that's like table stakes for 2022 uh, and it should be there. Okay, so with that, let's just do a quick user interface tour of the watch, uh, just setting it right here. Uh, so this is the watch face. You can customize this. You can also change what's shown on the bottom right there. Uh, so you can go ahead, you can say your steps, for example, uh, your percentage of battery, there's the time and the date up top. Uh, if I go ahead and I can scroll up right here, this is the exercise menu, but we'll go to the very, very top first and we'll do settings. And you go into the settings menu here and change just a couple things like alarms, connectivity is for pairing sensors. Uh, you can pair sensors, you can see a uh, list of paired devices, but again, it doesn't actually show you what those devices are. It just shows you that you do have one paired somewhere, but you can't see it. You can just go ahead and remove it at that point uh, to forget it and that's it. Uh, so it's kind of a bit of a bummer there. Uh, and if you go back here into the options, uh, another thing of note is on sleep tracking. Uh, it's not on by default, which is kind of silly to me, honestly, like just turn this on by default. Uh, so do remember to turn that on if you're getting the watch. And then go on back here, uh, media controls. This is for controlling music on your phone. So you can go ahead and press start uh, and stop and skip uh, and control the volume. There's no music storage on this watch itself. You can control notifications there and you can change from a couple different watch faces. Uh, so there are a handful in here. Uh, this is an area as well. I'd love to see Sunto kind of up their game and allow you to customize watch faces like other companies do. Uh, and maybe have some more options here. These largely haven't changed much. They added two last year to the Sunto 5 series. Uh, but I think, you know, at this point in time, having like put your own picture there and stuff like that uh, would be pretty handy. So scrolling back up here, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll cancel out of this area and start going down through. Uh, there is a basic timer for a stopwatch mode. Uh, so you can go ahead and you can set the timer right there if you want to, um, or just do a normal stopwatch. If we scroll on back here, we'll go down again. This is a logbook, so I can look at my given activities. So we'll go down, there's a, let's see, a cycling from last week, 17, there's one right here, it's a longer one I can find. There we go, uh, seven hours, 117 kilometers. You'll notice the user interface can be pretty slow at times. Uh, so, you know, loading that up, it's still not loaded yet. You just saw the delete option, and now it's loading up the different data pages going into it. And it's been quite a while, so you can see, uh, you know, my heart rate and stuff like that. And as you see in the display, it's just really dim. And this is not just the camera. This is exactly kind of what it looks like right now. Uh, probably even more dim in real life. Uh, but still, there's my descent and stuff like that. Uh, ascent and my, you know, elevation graph for that particular ride and so on. Uh, we'll scroll on back here out of the logbook and you can see all of your activities uh, within the logbook. Scroll on down, we have navigation. This is where you can load up routes and POIs that you've pushed from the watch. Uh, so I've got some routes loaded in here that I've used I've lasted a while. Let me find my um, lava uh, route right there. Uh, so in this case, I can navigate this route. I can see a very quick breadcrumb trail style of that, the distance, the ascent, the descent, uh, the highest point, the lowest point, uh, the date uh, that was pushed over to the watch. And then we'll go on back here, back again. Uh, I can look at my current location as well as tweak some of my navigation settings. So change the theme from dark uh, to light if I wanted to. Uh, that does brighten up the display a fair bit and so that makes it a little bit easier to, to see there. Uh, but then you notice the bezels way more obviously because it's just you know white and then gigantic uh, black around it. I can also change the GPS systems there. So this is some of the new things. One of the new things in the Sunto 5 Peak is the ability to change this to all these different constellations uh, with that new GPS chipset. So going on back here again, we'll go all the way back uh, into the ability to set a workout. So go up one, there we go, exercise. And then I have my workout profiles. Uh, so this is a uh, data field or data page collection that I set. Uh, so I created a running workout and I set some data fields within that. Um, or I can also choose default ones there. And then from there you can customize what particular data fields you put on a given uh, workout profile. So I'll choose that one for right now because I went ahead and added some stuff to that. And then you'll see at the top, it's gonna show me up there how many hours I left in battery. I don't have a ton of battery left on this particular watch right now. So I've got three hours of GPS battery in this mode, which is the best uh, GPS tracking mode. I can tap this upper right hand button though to go ahead and change to a lesser mode that gets me four hours which isn't that much um, normally this would get me uh, 40 hours and then but if I go in the least uh, accurate mode then I get 30 hours and that would get up to 100 hours if I had been fully charged watch so those turn down things turn off stuff to go ahead and save battery life I can go down though and I can turn on some of these things myself if I wanted to uh, so 
This is the Sunto Plus that I talked about earlier. These are the different data pages I can add. So I can say, hey, I want to add in, uh, let's just choose the uh, sprint running pace. Uh, I can choose intensity zones to display, whether the heart rate zones or pace zones. Uh, going on down further, I can set a target if I want to. I can choose a route to load. I can say, hey, for this particular route, I'm going to load um, that lava field one that I have right there. No problem. Uh, and I can say I want to navigate that. Yep. And that'll load it into the list there. So you'll see it's uh, loaded as a route. I can turn the backlight on uh, in a different way right now. It's just uh, set for normal. Um, I can turn on or off GPS. I can turn on or off the wrist heart rate. I can turn on what sensors are paired. And then again, there's that battery mode that I mentioned at the very top, as well as the theme. And then auto lap and auto pause. And then at the end, it'll tell you and ask you what your feeling was of that workout. So kind of a perceived effort sort of thing uh, post-workout. So if I go all the way back up to the top right here, and then go in this, we'll start that workout. Uh, Start that workout. There we go. Again, some of that lagginess. It's still thinking you heard the chirp. Start the workout. There we go. And that's fine. GPS isn't, signal isn't found here. So that's fine. We'll just dismiss that for now. And I'll show you the data fields. You can just see that lag just throughout the system. It's just kind of really slow sometimes. Uh, in this case, I have the eight different data fields that are on this one. It's showing you all the options. And it's all just the separate timer right now. It's kind of a quick test one to be able to show you eight different data fields. Uh, and then I can see here my lap data page. Uh, and then I've got my uh, zone intensity data page. I'm not outside and the heart rate sensor isn't on, so you can't see uh, what's on, but it's there's this on the back right there. Um, the camera's, the frequency is just right. So it actually is showing green and yellow, but uh, the flashing is the exact same, uh, you know, frames per second as a camera, so you don't see that. Uh, but you would normally see my heart rate right there. And there's a navigation page that you would see uh, the actual navigation or routing itself. Uh, and then you can see I'm off right, obviously, because it doesn't know where I am. Uh, and then here we have the media controls for controlling your music. Uh, and there's no music playing right now on my watch. So that's a simple overview of the sport profiles. Let um, me go back out of here and I'll cancel this out. So back on the watch face, we're going to go down this time. Uh, and you can see right here, this is my heart rate. So I can put my finger under that sensor here in just a second. I probably should find my heart rate. I can also tap to go to the right, uh, look at my heart rate over the last 12 hours or so. You can see it's gone up in the last little bit, uh, you know, about a couple hours ago when I woke up. Uh, but otherwise, it's sleep here. Uh, it's down lower. And again, trying to get this just enough so you can actually see the display there. And haven't quite found my heart rate yet, which is fine. It's normally on your wrist, of course. Uh, we'll go down again. So beyond heart rate, uh, there is stress there. I don't think I'm stressed, but it does, which is fine. And then there's resources, which is kind of like body battery. Uh, these will decrease over time. This seems a bit low today, to be honest. And a lot of times I do see it seems a bit low, uh, but that's an option there. Uh, that's all by first beat. Both of those metrics are, are driven by first beat. Uh, so the exact same that you'd see on Garmin, just branded differently. Uh, so in the case, there are steps that I can look at. I can look at my steps over time. I can look at the calories from that. Uh, fairly basic, fairly straightforward stuff. We'll go back here, we'll go down again. I can see the training this week. Uh, so it's been kind of a quiet week, actually, as I've been trying to get through all these reviews cranked out. Uh, last week, it was 19 hours. So uh, I think I have a picture of that last week showing that. Uh, so quite a bit different. I then got my sleep tracking that you can see right there. So this is uh, last night's sleep. Uh, and then I can go dig into that. Here's my sleep over the last few days. Uh, and then you can look at your average heart rate during sleep. And you can look at the exact stats for every single one of these nights of sleep if you want to as well. Going down, I've got my fitness level, which is your VO2 max. So it considers that 48 for my VO2 max, which seems abnormally low. Normally things put me like 57, 58, 59, over 60 sometimes. Uh, so it's kind of a bit odd. Uh, fitness age is estimation of your age based on your fitness level. So in this case, it's 20. Uh, I'm 39, but that's okay. That means that I'm theoretically more fit than the average 39-year-old. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm really 20, but I'm not going to complain about this particular uh, assumption right there. Uh, and I believe this is last page. Yep. And that's it. So that is simple Simply the user interface in a nutshell, uh, fairly basic, fairly straightforward, uh, but there's obviously a lot of features behind it. And once you start using it, things like navigation, routing, the snap to route, uh, those are all things that you can dive into. Okay, so there you go, a look at the new Sunto 5 Peak. As I mentioned earlier, I think this is a good option in that multi-sport kind of budget GPS realm, uh, but it really does depend on what you want to use it for, especially if you're looking for hiking or navigation. If you're not looking at hiking and navigation, I probably would go with a different watch that has a better display on it, uh, because there are lots of options in this 
price point uh, from many, many different companies that have you know, better displays and more features. But if you do want that navigation side of things, uh, that breadcrumb trail and also all the heat map stuff and all the uh, navigation features behind the scenes that Sunto has, then in that case, this watch may make more sense at that particular price point. Anyways, there you go, a complete look at the Sunto 5P. Also, don't forget my full in-depth written review, linked down below there somewhere. That has way more detail in depth, especially in, like the accuracy areas and some of the nuances of the training load and things like that uh, that I didn't get into in this particular video. Again, thanks for watching and have a good one.